I actually had one kite, one uh, 1100 barra, come flying up from 18 metres of water. It took the lure, flew straight up in the air, and then as it's coming down, it actually landed straight in the back of my kayak, and the hook decided to hook into the back of the, my backrest at the same time. So all of a sudden, here I am in the dam with a 1100 barra slapping me in the back <laughs> until I got to the bait. Oh man, I copped it that night. I had bruises on my shoulder where it kept on hitting me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's uh, just... Well, who, who says fishing's not dangerous? Oh, yeah, it's dangerous. Uh. G'day, guys. Welcome back to another episode. We're um, going up to Tinaroo tonight. Um, I'm taking one of the all-time masters of Tinaroo fishing with us. I've got to know this guy over the last six months, and he's an absolute star when it comes to catching barrows at uh, Tinaroo. Anyway, stay tuned, because uh, it's going to be a big night. So Tim, we've got about an hour to kill before we uh, get up to Tinaroo. Um, you want to do an intro? I've already done it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't need it. We, don't, we don't need an intro for you, mate. You're one of the legends of Tinaroo. Uh, how, how many nights a week did you use to fish it? Oh, too many. I can tell you that much. The first couple of years when I was trying to work out when I was going to go up and actually do a serious crack at it, I did every single night I could get up there. My girlfriend debated whether or not she was my girlfriend or whether she was just a, a fish mongrel to keep, um, keep a bed for me. That's all it was. <laughs> and uh, how many how many big metre barrows have you caught now? Metre barrows? Oh, oh shit. Didn't you tell me the other day? Yeah, no, that was one year's trip. One year's worth. One year's worth? Yeah. 400? No, no, I've, I've caught over four, I've just caught over 400. I think it's 412 in the uh, four years I was doing it, but in the um, one year particularly, I got um, 106 for the year uh, barrows. Out of 106, there was 90 of them, uh, sorry, um, 16 of them were under a metre, uh, but out of the 90 that I landed that were all over a metre, I had 31 of them were over 1,200, and I also had three that were over 1,300. Wow. And over that time, you were telling me that you've caught every size in the 120s? Yeah, I managed. It took me actually 18 months to get my my first 120. Uh, my girlfriend actually used to, her fourth fish was a 124. So she used to pay out on me all the time. Have you got a bigger one than mine? No, just head down in shame. Um, but then when I cracked it, it was just like, that was the icing on the cake. Then as soon as I cracked it, I just um, couldn't stop catching them then. And in the 130s, how many of them you caught? I've got three 130s. So I've got a 131 was my first one. Uh, I've got a 134 and a 135. Wow, they're big fish. Oh, they are. They're awesome. But And mind you, all these fish were in my kayak. I was kayak fishing in those days. Yep. And um, you were telling me earlier about a triple hookup. You um, want to tell everyone about that? Yeah, well, there's a bit of funny um, story to this triple hookup. Is what had happened was I'd gone up uh, three nights earlier and I was lucky enough to get uh, seven fish for the night. The smallest fish was 118, and then I got five 1200s and one 1300. And because I knew where they were holding, I thought, you know what, I was going to take some mates of mine for work up, they were going to fish out of their boat and I'd pay around in the kayak. But I thought, what the heck, I've already caught these fish, I know how big they are. So I thought, yeah, why not? I'll take some light gear up. So I took two four pound outfits and a ten pound outfit, which was basically my jungle perch and sooty gear. And I paddled around till basically half up one that night. I had uh, 13 strikes up until then. Could not hook one fish because as you can imagine, the rods were too soft. They just wouldn't hook up. And then um, basically, right on half past two, the other guys had all gone to bed. They were in a bigger boat, so they anchored up for the night. Right on half past two, I looked at the sounder, saw one really big fish and two smaller fish beside it. And in my head, I'm just going, strike, strike. And all three rods did. They just absolutely triple hook up, could not believe, and they all hooked up. So all of a sudden, instead of just fighting one fish, I've actually trying to fight three fish at the same time. And um, the commotion they made was incredible. It was just so much fun in the kayak. And in the end, I ended up having two smaller fish um, beat on, one was on four pound, one was on 10, beside me. 
So, and the other middle one was a really big fish. So I turned around, paddled over to the boys and said, here, hold these two now while I go chase the other fish. It took me nearly 40 minutes by the time I was finished. And the big fish turned out to be 129 centimetres on four pound gear. But oh, that's a massive fish. Oh, it was, it was awesome. It was just, couldn't believe it. And the fact that it was a triple hookup, I mean, that's just something you, you just don't think would ever happen. You know. So what size leader were you using on two on four pound? <laughs> Still 50 pound leader. Yeah. Um, I've got a, a technique on how I tie light lines on heavy leader. Um, it's um, what I've done for many years. I'd actually do a longer double than normal. Then I double the double on top of south. So I've basically got one single strand of two. Then I've got two strands of two. Then I've got four strands of two, which allows me then to tie on a um, the uh, 50 pound leader. Yeah, right so it's like a tapered leader, mate. Timmy, <laughs> what do you got there, mate? Uh, Jump up in the light. Yep. Oh. Oh. That's it. Perfect. Yep. Talk us through it, mate. What's happened? Uh, I think I hit a tree stump. <laughs> tree stump? Doesn't look like named tree stump. <laughs> nah. That's a nice fish. Nice fish. Oh. Don't lose him under the boat. Oh, I love the sound of that drag, mate. So do I. <laughs> yeah, no. Nice fish. What do you call them? Uh, maybe, maybe about a 90. Yeah. Well, let's put it over. Nice fish to break the drought, anyhow. Yeah. First time you caught one in a while? Yeah, up here. Been, um, 2019 New Year's Day was the last bar I caught up here. Yep. So, yep. Okay. Little bogos. Oh. Whoa, nice fish. Nice fish. He's a, oh, he'd be up around a metre, I reckon. Oh, yeah, nice fish. Nice Tim. fish. Beautiful fish. Hey? Beautiful fish. The master. <laughs> He's easy a metre, mate. He's easy a metre. Oh. Pass the second plate. Yep. So. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish. Yep. <laughs> yep. And he's absolutely swallowed it so far down that butt on, on a mollux. Mollux yep. down the track. Yep. Caught him on the, the bottom hook. You're going to tie them up, mate. Yep. Here, do you want these to get them out? Yes, I will. Um, and you're going to laugh. Why? Because the leader material is fluor yellow. One of the little tricks I used to do. Yeah. Was I used fluoro leaders instead of fluoro carbon. I'll hold him up for a photo, mate. Come on, girl. Yep, he's a meter. Don't you spike my arm. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Oh. Got me on the fin. Come big girl. You know, talk about being slapped. You're making hard work out of that, mate. I am. Wow, are you working, mate? <laughs> hey, what a, what a ripping fish. Yep. <coughs> Typical Tinaroo Barra. Pushies, pushies, yep. pushies. That's better. That's eh? better. Yeah, that's much better. That yeah. looks heaps better. Well done, <laughs> mate. That's a great fish. Thanks, Pete. Swim him a little bit? Uh, don't have to. I can tell you that now. You ready to go? Yeah. You ready? Yep. Oh. Perfect dive. Oh. And I'm come back and bite you on the finger. And I'm like Lake Phil. I'm happy enough to wash my hands. <laughs> Mate, it was only two days ago <laughs> we were up at Lakefield catching barras in lagoons. Yeah. And we're up at Tinaroo now catching them in the dam. Well done, mate. Uh, Congratulations. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had I've had barras come up and slap me across on the strike. One fish in particular was 28 metres of water. I've got a good memory for these fish. Turn around and come flying up. And it took the lure on like a dolphin would up, up through the side at full speed. 
and it actually come straight past me and slapped me across the face with its tail and scared the shit out of me, I can tell you, because it was pitch black at the time. So yeah, I've had a lot of fun, I must admit. It is good fun up there. <laughs> oh mate, I can't wait. Can't wait to get up there and hopefully we get we have some sort of a night tonight. Mate, um, can't wait to get that get out and get amongst it. Yeah, I just hope they, um, as I say, we can find a couple and convince them that um, our offerings are worth it. And uh, yeah, even though if they only knew they were going to go back in the water, they'd be happy. <laughs> so Tim. Yeah, mate. We just missed a fish. Yep. Literally jumped one off. Yep. And this one, we so I said we've been marking a few fish. We said, oh, we're going to get one here. Dead set. Within <laughs> uh, not even 20 seconds of saying it. Here he is, or she is. She is, yep. Looks like a nice fish too. Yeah, it doesn't feel too bad. It might be a fraction bigger than the last one I've got. Pulling a bit of string. Yep. Yeah. Found a bit of stick in there. It's found stick. No stick. Oh, it's found a bit weird. Here it comes. Oh. Oh. Just let go. Oh, you're kidding! It did. Tim! It did. Dropped it. Oh, that's two in a row, Tim. Told you I felt it hit stick. Oh, no! No! Yes, it happens. That's <laughs> dinner <tinnery> for you. <laughs> and that's barrel fishing for you. Oh, shit. So close. So, Tim, when I've. When I've uh, first met you a long time ago now um, you gave me a, a, um, a hook with a little treble attached to the head of it yeah and at the time there was nothing you couldn't buy anything like that you actually had to make it yourself and um, just want to talk us through how that came about yeah well what was happening is I was finding that a lot of the strikes were getting because these fish at the time uh, weren't shy of the kayak at all and what they were doing is when they were swallowing the lure they were swallowing it that far down their gullet that you get some great strikes and actually if you lost them you turn and come back and you'd find your leader was frayed and it was up the freight up to 18 inches ahead of the jig and I was it didn't take me long to work out that what they were doing they were swallowing it that far and that was actually the line slowly pulling out of their mouth and as a plant, and then as soon as the jig head hit the, the lip of the uh, or the tongue area of the fish, that's when they reacted. Um, so I thought, well, okay, how are we going to turn and get this to um, to somehow pin them in that area? Because uh, I didn't want to pin them down in the gallop that far down. Cause if you try to get a treble or whatever out that deep, it's a nightmare. So um, so I ended up um, I found that it was quite simple if I drilled a hole, a two mil hole in the jig head um, on basically a 45 degree angle. I found, I used to get the um, the VMC's 5 o's. 5 o's, that's what you told me, yep. I still got them at home. Yep, cut, cut the actual hook part of it off. Yep. And then what I did, and this is the funniest part about it, I actually only super glued them in the jig head. Um, I never ever had one ever pull out, so I used to put the um, you either hook up and through the hole, and then I'd turn in the leftover, I'd just get the grinder, cut it off flat, and then I'd turn and put literally only a number six size treble. Very small, because if I found that if you used any bigger than that, the problem is you'd be pinning them too far down in the throat. Um, because all these fish I'm catching, I'm releasing in the first place, I didn't want to kill any. Um, so that's where I found, and, and it absolutely worked a treat. I was getting almost 80% hookup rate through this technique, um, which changed my whole fishing in this, uh, with these fish really good. And the other thing also, it sounds funny, but I probably was one of the first guys to start using a one ounce jig head rather than a half ounce or three quarter. Uh, and the only reason why I did that was because I was actually using a 10 hook in my jig heads. So, whereas most people were only using 7-0s or 8-0s. Um, and that was because I was using the uh, TT Tournament jig heads, which I found, uh, which is an SL12 Gamma Gasu hook, which is absolutely brilliant for these fish. They're like the um, fly hook, combo. Yeah, well that's right. They were invented for uh, fly fishing, uh, for sail fishing that. So, they're extremely uh, sharp, uh, very narrow, 
uh, very lightweight, so the uh, anoils also um, absolutely swore by the uh, big burpy giant ripple um, 16 centimetre uh, lure, and that's where the big 10 o was perfect for because the 8 o was just too small for them. And, okay, and face it that way. Yep. yep. Can you see me in it? Uh, not really. So swap over. This is a big fish, Tim. Yep, good fish feet. We stopped just yep. after you lost yours. We sent him on the side scan. So we cast to them. I put the mollocks out there. And this is a this is a nice fish, eh? And they pull pull string like that. I haven't had one pull string on me like that for a long time. Mm -hmm. Woohoo, you beauty! Come on, baby. Mm. Not with a good light. Oh. Can you kneel down? Yep. If you kneel down, you need better light, that's all. That's better. Oh, oh no! I oh, know, I got no. him. Still got him. Oh, that was lucky. Hey, the, how come this. Oh, yeah, tap goes out. Right. Oh, Tim. Yep. Oh, shit. Right. I'm trying to get rid of this stuff. Oh. Okay. Oh. Coming in. Coming in. Yep. Oh. How do you get the light to come back on? Oh, just tap on. the. Just yeah, tap no, the, back the light is on. No. Oh. Can't see him. He's coming. Yep. There he is. Oh, nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, wait on Pete. Oh. Can you lip grip him? Yep, yep. Okay. You ready? Yep. Oh, yes. Good fish, good fish. <laughs> oh, oh, shit, Lua. Oh. Lua just popped out. Yeah, Lua hit me in the hand. Oh, yeah. Here, Pete, hold the, hold the camera for that. Got it. Ready? One, two, three. In the boat. Oh, that's a big fish, Tim. That's a really big fish. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I might take this back. Yep. Okay. Oh. So get, take him up there. Whoop. You all right? Yep. Yep. How's you your finger? Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Just get up there. Oh, nice oh. fish. Oh, that's a big fish. Okay. Oh, there's even more on the side yeah, no, That's what I said. They're all up, around us, Tim. Coming up on that, that plateau out of that gully there. There you go. Okay. Nice. And, yeah, you come. Oh, I'm, I'm losing the light. So, yep, um, that's it. Just, yep, all good. Oh, that's a ripping fish, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, look at that, Tim. Look at that. Can you see that in the camera? Yep. That is beautiful. Look at the shoulders on that fish. He's huge. Look at that. That's a... F My whole hand won't fit over that. Yep. That's a beauty. What a night. <laughs> hey, two big ones. And we've lost two others. She's ready to go, eh? Yep, yep. Righto. Bye, bye. Bye bye girl. There she yeah. goes. <coughs> yes! So what do you think? Oh mate, you are the man, <laughs> huh? You are the man! This guy knows the ledges, the drop off. There's gonna be one sitting here, and sure enough, that's where they are. You're a legend, mate. Legend. Thanks, Pete. Woo. Tim, you mentioned earlier that um, you um, you've caught 400 fish. Was yep. there any, uh, there any uh, memorable ones in amongst those? Yeah, um, there's quite a few actually, but I mean, I must admit that the, when I was doing the, the big article on basic kayak fishing and when I got the 106 fish in one year, um, I was lucky enough to actually have my son come up from Brisbane, uh, go fishing with me for that uh, weekend. And um, I was on 99 fish at the time. And he decided to come fishing with me, which was good, so we turned um, 
put the kayaks in uh, Kiroi Creek, which is one of the areas that I was doing. And um, it was so funny because we literally put the kayaks in the water. He started paddling. I jumped in mine. As soon as I started paddling, I threw the lure out the back. And he turned around and said to me, hey, Dad, how long does it take to catch? And as he went to say fish, I hooked up straight away and got my hundreds of fish right there within 12 seconds of paddling. I mean, it, it's pure ass, absolute ass. I managed to catch it, six fish that night. Um, oh, sorry, four fish that night because it went to um, 104. I mean, it was great that he was there with me when I got that achievement because, I mean, to me, getting 100 fish for a year was, uh, and that was only in 22 trips as well. So um, I had three blowout trips. Uh, blowout trips was meaning that I had no success at all. Um, or I had a couple of strikes but didn't so land in it. Out of those 19, you got 104 Eight, fish. Yeah. That's a lot of fish. Oh, it is. Five yeah. to nine. Yeah, yeah, I had some good nights, I can tell you that much. But 18 in one night, I'm still coming to terms <laughs> with that. 18 barrows at Tinaru in one night. That's horrendous. Yeah, it's um... It'd have been knackered. Oh, Tim. We've done it again. This is number three. Hey, Danny. It's only early. We've found a mother load. There's just barrows everywhere here on the sounder. And we've stopped and we've started casting. And this is our second one on the cast. I've just had another hit, which I lost. Good work, Tim. Not a big fish. Not a big one? No, probably a 70, I'd say, something like that. But, it's a barrel. Oh, no, he's bigger than seven. Shit, yeah. Well, at least you know I don't exaggerate, then. <laughs> he's bigger than 70, mate. Okay, there you go. Here you go. Where is he? Oh, there he is. He's nice fish, mate. Yeah. 70 centimetres, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> mate, he would be dead set close to the mark. He's a great, oh, he's, he's a nice easy, <laughs> he's a meter mate, you're kidding me. Oh, he's 70 centimetres, <laughs> under calling it. Fucking hell, uh, what a gripping fish. Hey, another meter. Uh, Tim's little honey <laughs> hole. Swallowed it right down again. We'll call this place Tim's Plateau. It's two metres of water that comes up out of nowhere and they're just here. And there's heaps of them. The sound is just alive with barras. <laughs> and we're having a sesh. The yeah. Tinaru sesh. Yes, we are. Show us. Pick it up, mate. Give us a give us a look. Oh, Tim. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Pull his head uh, down a bit. Down. That's better. Yeah, so he doesn't stretch his neck out. That's <laughs> yeah. the way. Yep. Perfect, mate. What a beauty. <laughs> Number two for you. Number two. Number three for the night. Yep. Oh, okay. Let's go. Right? Yep. Okay. One, two, three. And he goes. Well done, mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wipe your fish slime on someone else, will you? <laughs> Fuck yeah. You're not getting in my you're not getting in my car, you stink. <laughs> uh, stink of the best <laughs> smell. <laughs> Good job, mate. Well done. No worries, Pete. Um, Tim, you um, you mentioned to me at one stage there you were fishing early one morning and uh, the barras had schooled up some bony brims or some or some yeah rubbers. yeah they they schooled up on um, oh, out of the mouth of the barren they out on the, the front left hand flat there and um, oh man. In a space of 40 minutes, I landed eight fish, just one, I literally couldn't throw three rods. I could only put one rod in the water. As soon as I start paddling, I'd hook up, fight that one, let it go, throw it out, paddle, bang, on again. And it was just incredible, one of those mornings where the, the school, because there's a roaming school of fish in Tinnery Dam. Um, 
most impoundments will have what, what I call a roaming school. Uh, there could be anywhere from two to three hundred fish in this school. Uh, every now and then you'll get to see them uh, and they'll school up the bait like a, um, a school of tuna will and they'll just smash the hell out of them. Twice I've seen it, twice I was in my kayaks without a fishing rod. Uh, it absolutely frustrated the hell out of me because I couldn't do anything about it. So it looked, uh, it looked like a school of tuna? Oh yeah, the, the bait's all up in the middle of, the, in the middle of nowhere and, and the barrels is going left, right and centre. It's literally like you see a school of tuna do it. Uh, they, had the, they pushed the bait to that point in this bay right up on the bank and they're jumping up on the beaches and everything. I mean, well, not the beaches, but the bank itself. Um, yeah, it's incredible to watch. A couple of guys have seen it, um, but I've been lucky enough to see it twice, and then the third time I was actually in my kayak, and that's when I got the eight fish in 40 minutes. So, wow. So, you, if you fish long enough in, in in certain areas, you get to see things that you know most people don't get to see. You've got to put the time in, unfortunately. Um, and Tinaru is known as the land of a thousand casts, but obviously. Obviously, you know, had it pretty well worked out. Yeah, well, lucky for me, I wasn't casting. Yeah. <laughs> I was paddling, but believe me, I think I might have put a, more than a thousand paddles in. <laughs> <laughs> you spent half your life up there, mate. Oh, I did at one stage there. Um, yeah, so, but um, the achievement of the triple hookup was, uh, as I say, I mean, I don't know, most people will never have something like that happen to them in a lifetime, so. I've been lucky like that. Especially if they're, when they're all over a metre. Yeah. So, close, anyhow. Yeah. Two, three, yep. Yeah. Oh, mate. Another big one. How's it feel, Pete? Oh, <coughs> tell you what. Very, very happy, mate. Four barrows. This will, this will be our fourth if we land it in one night. Oh, get out from under there. <laughs> Keep him down low. Oh. <coughs> oh. Ooh. Oh. Bit like that, is it? Oh, yeah, my side. Jesus. Get back <coughs> out, man. <laughs> <laughs> completely under the boat. Yeah. Yeah, Don't you hate that? Yeah, You're come. fighting it from here and it's jumping over there. Yeah, that's got him. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah nice fish, nice fish. Nice fish. Yep, yeah. okay. Oh. Take your time. Oh, get out from under there. Oh, Tim, this plateau you've put us on, <coughs> dead set. Oh, this guy just doesn't want to get up. No, the body's putting up. Yeah, that's good. Peeling some drag. Oh. Come on, baby. You must be just about. <laughs> I'll tell ya. Oh, nice fish. Yep, another good fish. Oh, nice <coughs> fish, Tim. Okay. You got the bogus there? I'll get them. Hey, you give me that. Okay, you got that? Yep, nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, check that out. <laughs> Tim! Right. Oh. Right. One, two, three. Bring him up here. Bring him straight up. Oh, nice fish. Tim! Tim! <laughs> Tim. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to leave, gonna, leave you hanging, I'm just trying to juggle everything. Uh, okay, give me the <laughs> camera. Give me that. Oh, okay. man. Oh. Oh, I'll get over the other side. <coughs> oh, the mollocks. The gold mollocks, Tim. Yeah. <coughs> Let's have a look and see where it is. Okay. Oh, hang on. Let me I think it's the, down his throat. I reckon he's... Yeah, Let's have a look. Camera shot. Check that out. Right down in there, mate. Put it yeah. right in there. Yeah. Gold Molex down the th down the throat. Yep. So that's where 
and he's caught on the he, he he hasn't been hooked on the big hook he's been caught on the uh on the treble at the front yep so the big hook was actually floating free yep oh tim that's a monster <laughs> how good's that let's have a look and see how big he is yep. i reckon he's not as big as the other one mate. you don't reckon no so one two three no, he's four not. five no the other one's five so it's a long way short he's uh I'm going to say 50 mil past the second one. So yep. we'll measure all these up when we get home. Yeah. That's what happens when you oh. forget the brag mat. I'll put that in a safe place. In my tackle box. <laughs> you want to buy a gold Molex? <laughs> Going cheap. Look at that scuff mm. on that. Yeah. What a nice fish. <laughs> Still really He's got a tag in him too. Has he? Oh, yeah. he has too, yeah. How good's that? Yeah. See the tag hanging out of him there? Yeah. It'll be interesting to know how uh, how yeah. big this guy's going to be. But see how he's got an infection around it? The last one yeah. I caught here had an infection around it too. Yeah, most of them do. Yeah. You're supposed to pull them out, but I'd leave it in there. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. Let's, let's get the numbers in? off it. Hey? Get the numbers off it. Can you get the numbers off it? We should be able to. I just need a light. Yeah, bring Bring the camera over. He's ready to go. Can you see that? Yep. What a beauty. How cool is that? Woohoo! Right on, mate. <laughs> Gone? Gone. <laughs> Two each, Tim. Two, Two each. each. Tim's Plato, oh, I'm astounded. <laughs> this is the best night at Tinaru. It's very close to the best I've ever had. I've only got to get one more and yeah, we're there. Mate, I'm so happy. Whew, thank you very much. You're welcome. You are okay. the master. You were telling me also about the night that you got the most amount of strikes. <laughs> yeah, well that was... Uh, yeah, no, remember, this is, this is a guy in a kayak. <laughs> Who's fishing by himself in one night? Yeah, there, it was me and my partner that night. We started at, at five o'clock in the afternoon. We paddled all night. We got 44 strikes in the kayaks that night. We landed 18 for the night, um, and that was when she got her um, big fish. She only managed to get um, four fish for the night, but one was at 12:40, so she was wrapped. Um, and that's how I could just about anything you can think of but just couldn't get that big fish 18 fish in one night yeah it's great that is exceptional fishing oh it was i mean and the funny thing about it was, was when i was doing it back then i didn't even use a sounder i was actually just paddling along the bank generally because you look at the contour of the bank you can tell whether it's going to go shallow or whether it's going deep and i troll anywhere from three to ten meters off the bank depending on the, the slope of the bank and most of the time we either use Z-mans or squeegees, that's all we were using. Um, just very simple technique, uh, but as I say, up close. Yep. Yeah. So how far behind the, your kayak would your lures be? In the end, when I was uh, doing it by myself, my furthest, I'd have a technique with three rods, so my first lure, which would be the bank lure, would literally be at the end of my kayak. So the rods are in front of me, so it's literally, I can see, as I'm paddling, stroking, I can actually see the rod out to my side. My middle rod is the number one uh, stroke zone. It's no more than five feet behind my kayak. And then the third one, I'd always have a deeper running lure or a heavier weight jig um, to turn and just drop it down a little bit deeper and it would be maybe a metre past that again. So, so you're looking at basically one metre, two metres and three metres behind the kayak. Wow. It's close. <laughs> Well, mate, you're, uh, you're a pretty humble man. You don't talk about yourself too much. And um, anyway, we're, uh, we're very much looking forward to getting out on the dam and uh, catching a few. And hopefully tonight's the night. Well, uh, the moon's about right for yeah, us. Yeah, well, it's October moon. It's one of my favorite months to get up there when I was doing it. So um, I just hope they come on the bite. 
they just had a, a big tournament up there so maybe they might be a bit hook shy because the boys up there would have known what they were doing. So I still love fishing, fishing's what I was I think meant to do and, and if it wasn't for fishing it'd be golf but I um, yeah but fishing is a passion. Oh absolutely it's yeah. a passion for all for a lot of people. Well Tim we really appreciate you um, shedding some light on your experiences up here at Tinaru and um, thanks for spending some time with us to, um, talking about it. Yeah, no worries, Pete. Mate, thank you so much for bringing me to your <laughs> plateau. I tell you what, he's probably not going to ever let on where this is, but if you ever find Tim's plateau, you know you're there because the barras are just thick. I've never seen so many barras in one spot. Yeah, it's been a good one. It has been a good yeah. night. But anyway... Um, this is what we've been using. That's the the gold Mollux, and Tim's been using the uh, black clear one. It's a black. It's a clear one with a gold fins and black on top. Um, these seem to work really well. Um, you guys might remember last year we did a, a, a sh um, an episode on Tinaru called There's Some, and tonight we literally did the same thing. We trolled along. We saw some fish on the sounder and we cast to them and caught them. And they were big fish too. So, yeah, yeah it was a, it worked really a well. Good night, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. anyway, I appreciate you um, watching our channel and uh, following us. And um, if you've liked tonight, tonight or tonight's episode, <laughs> <laughs> please uh, like it and um, look forward to seeing you on the next one. See you next time.